You guys voted for the subject of my next Spider-Man PS4 video, so here it is. Well, with a little bit of a twist. Hey, Chris Baker here. You guys remember Neversoft Spider-Man game, right? In addition to being arguably the first great game to star the wall crawler, it also gave us something we had only ever seen in fighting games before it. Something we take for granted in superhero video games today, alternate costumes. For Spider-Man PS4, Insomniac has confirmed that it will continue the tradition of alternate costumes in Spidey games, and I'm sure everyone watching this has their favorites they're hoping return. And while it's easy to make a list that includes favorites like the Symbiote costume, 2099, Scarlet Spider, uh, Scarlet Spider, that's kind of boring. If you care enough to watch this video, you know those already. In the Twitter poll that you voted on, I used the phrase underused alternates, not to be confused with underuse alternates. <laughs> but let's go one step further. The top 20 list I'm about to present includes some costumes that have never been playable in Spider-Man console and PC games. And I use that qualification because of Spider-Man Unlimited on mobile, which has gotta be at like 300 suits right now. Still, I don't think that game has all of these either. When you take the whole Spider-Verse into consideration, narrowing things down to 20 is quite the task. So all of these had to fit within two parameters. First, I'm only allowing costumes belonging to Peter Parker's. That's plural because sometimes they come from parallel realities. But only parallel realities where the character is named Peter Parker. So, sorry all of you web warriors here. Also, every costume on this list was part of an actual story. Not just cool cover art like we get sometimes for variant cover themes. Okay, enough preamble. Let's do this. Number 20. Parker Industries. Peter's most frequently worn costume since 2015 is mostly in line with his traditional look, but it's a lot more techy to reflect his role as the head of Parker Industries, which recently ended in 2017. He was basically Steve Jobs or Bill Gates as a day job while traveling the world to assist Nick Fury as Spidey. I think Insomniac could do some really cool stuff with things that don't come across on a static page, like the oversized glowing spider and the glowing eyes. Number 19. Spider-Hulk The 1990 Web of Spider-Man story where Peter turned into a Spider-Hulk was pretty dumb and had absolutely no repercussions, but it'd make for a pretty great alternate costume. This story was so simple it didn't even bother to name the mad scientist who stole Bruce Banner's Hulk essence and accidentally transferred it to Spidey. Spidey hulks out a couple times in Web of Spider-Man number 70, but by the end of the issue that Hulk essence is conveniently recaptured by the device that stole it. Years later, Spidey would Hulk out again in a story called World War Hulks, plural, but I prefer the green to the brown. Number 18. The Amazing Spider. There was a really fun set of annuals in 2011 that spanned The Amazing Spider-Man, Deadpool, and The Incredible Hulk. The story was called Identity Wars, and it gave us this alternate reality Peter Parker who went by The Spider. I love this look, and he's basically a parody of Superman and Batman at the same time with his cape and spider cave, all with a really dark twist. Fun side note, back when I worked with Marvel Games, I was working on Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and I suggested a nod to Identity Wars through these costumes for Deadpool and Doctor Doom. Number 17. Deathlock Survival Gear. This militaristic look for Spider-Man originated in Wolverine Weapon X number 13 by Jason Aaron, with a glimpse into a possible future where Roxxon rules the world and is destroying anyone with superpowers with the use of Deathlock cyborgs. Peter puts up a good fight, but it doesn't end so well for him. Number 16 Friendly Neighborhood Spider God Jason Aaron returns with a much happier tale in his super fun Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine series from 2012. Your friendly neighborhood spider god is really just your standard Marvel Universe Peter Parker stuck in a weird time vortex. This costume comes at the beginning of issue 1 where we're introduced to the fact that the two heroes are stranded in a prehistoric era for months and they have no idea how they got there. There are actually quite a few good alternates I considered from the story and you'll see another one very soon. Number 15. Old West Spidey. 
and by very soon, I meant right now. Near the end of Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine, Peter and Logan are stranded in the Old West for what appears to be even more months, maybe even years. I love the subtle nods to their actual costumes that you see both on Spidey's hat and Wolvie's necklace. Number 14. Fear itself. Awaken! Marvel's huge comic crossover event of 2011, Fear Itself, ended with Earth's Mightiest Heroes leveling up with costumes created from the same material that makes up Thor's hammer, called Uru. Spidey only wears this costume for a few panels, and his dialogue isn't exactly super compelling as he does, Gah! and Cap, look out! But I do like the design. Plus, it ideally makes him just more powerful to play as when you wear this costume. Number 13. American Sun. I have always loved what Peter did with his cloth black costume back during the American Sun story in The Amazing Spider-Man number 599. After the Dark Avengers and Norman Osborn as the Iron Patriot had foiled Peter's attempt to infiltrate the group, they beat the crap out of him to the point that his mask was destroyed. As the story came to a conclusion, Harry Osborn donned his own armor to become the American Sun and to fight his father. Spidey improvised a new mask with his remaining cloth and jumped into the fight like this. Number 12. Spider-Man as Daredevil. Did you know that Peter wore Daredevil's costume? There was a time during the Brand New Day era when Spidey was in trouble with the law, so Peter asked Matt Murdock nicely if he had an extra Daredevil costume he could borrow. Eventually Vermin would rip it to shreds during a fight, so uh, Matt's not getting this one back. Number 11. Naked Spidey. Back in 2014, The Amazing Spider-Man number 1 brought Peter back to Spider Heroics after having his mind replaced by Dr. Octopus for the past couple of years. While attempting to foil a plot by the C-list villain White Rabbit, Spidey found himself face to face with her Z-list associate named Skyne. Her power? To control fabric. It didn't take long for Peter's spider suit to become a suit more of the birthday variety. Number 10. Mythos. We've seen Spidey's origin told and retold many times now, but it may not have ever looked better than in Paolo Rivera's beautifully painted pages of a 2007 one-shot called Mythos. I love just how real this ensemble looks as Peter tries out his powers for the first time. And just a few pages later, he's meeting Conan O'Brien. Number 9. Black Widower. Recently, Spider-Man has been palling around with Deadpool an awful lot. In issue number 8 of Spider-Man Deadpool, Peter tried on this new costume after having been brought back from the dead with a bit of an attitude. It was actually Deadpool who kills him. I'd love to see the suit's stealth mechanic at work in Insomniac's game somehow, but more importantly, this look just works for me. It's got a Black Widow hourglass on its palm, so that's why I'm calling this the Black Widower. Number 8. Secret Wars Civil War The big Secret Wars event of 2015 was hit and miss, but a highlight was definitely Civil War, written by Charles Soule. It basically answered the question of what would have happened if the superhero Civil War had never ended. The answer? The US divides itself between East and West, led by Iron Man and Cap respectively. Peter played a major role early on. He was on Captain America's side, but MJ and their daughter were in the East with Iron Man. With no reason to wear the mask anymore, and with things just more militaristic overall, these were Peter's fatigues in the series. It'd be cool if Insomniac could add a glide mechanic with the falcon-like wings, but they can always be simply retracted, I guess. Number 7. The Halloween Costume. There's part of Amazing Spider-Man number 647 when Peter has to stop overdrive, but his suit's being laundered. Luckily, he's at a Halloween store with a cheap Spidey knockoff costume that he gets absolutely no royalties from. And by the end of it all, it's like meeting Skyne in entry number 11 all over again. This whole scenario would actually make a really great side mission, and that'd be an extra cool way to earn the alternate costume. Number 6. Ultimate Spider-Man's wrestling costume. After the poster everyone talked about in Peter's room in the last trailer, we have to include the wrestling costume from Ultimate Spider-Man number three, don't we? I think the odds are pretty good we'll see it make the cut. Number five. Ultimate Spider-Man's first costume. 
Late in that same issue number three, the wrestling promoter tells Peter he hates his other costume and gives him a new one, which will soon turn out to be the actual first ever Spider-Man suit in the Ultimate Universe. It's pretty much just some spider decals away from being his actual costume that we know and love, but it's still something that we've never seen. It has a high degree of importance, and it's also kind of just cool for being different. Number 4 Seems like the perfect slot for a Fantastic Four costume, huh? Spidey actually has quite a few variations on this over the years, from his Bagman look we see all the time in games, to the Fantastic Five, but I like this one best for a couple reasons. One, it's just a cool design. Most Fantastic Four themed Spider-Man suits don't actually include a spider around the Four emblem. And two, it actually happens in mainline continuity. Probably the only reason it doesn't work out is that the Fantastic Four had officially changed to the Future Foundation at this point, shortly after the apparent death of the Human Torch. We've seen plenty of Future Foundation costumes in video games, but never the actual Fantastic Four costume that came right before them. Number 3 Negative Spider-Man Put simply, when this happens in the game... I hope we get gameplay in this costume as an evil Spider-Man for a while. Number 2 Spider-Man 1967 During the Spider-Verse comic book event, Miles Morales and the cartoon Ultimate Spider-Man had an adventure in this universe that looks conspicuously like the 60s TV show. For legal reasons, Insomniac would likely need to officially make this costume tied to the comic, but we all know where it really comes from. Wallop and web snappers! Even though it's so stripped down, this look is downright iconic and deserves to be represented in a game. Number 1 The first Spider-Man costume Would you believe that Steve Ditko's first ever Spider-Man costume has never come to life in a video game? The differences are subtle, sure, but they're definitely there. For one thing, and possibly debatable depending on who you ask, the part on the suit we think of as blue is widely reported to actually be black, with blue there to accentuate the shadows. I tend to believe that myself, so I'm gonna call it black, it's my list. But even more obvious, that spider on his back is differently shaped and definitely not red. In fact, it's very blue. Anyway, I'd call that a pretty historically significant alternate costume, wouldn't you? I can't think of a better number one. So what did you think of all this? And what costumes would you hope to see? Let me know in the comments, and maybe we can do a little more on the subject in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Till next time, everybody.